So welcome for a physics lesson. I want us to look at the application of the law of rotation and Archimedes principle at the same time in weather balloons. <coughs> Therefore, weather balloons which are filled with air or gas of a lower density compared to air. Therefore, we take balloons, then we fill them with air inside or gases inside which have a density lower than the density of air. For example, hydrogen is a gas of a very low density and helium. These two options are most preferred. Therefore, you find when a balloon is filled with hydrogen or helium, which have a very low density, this balloon is able to float in air because the balloon displaces air and that air causes upthrust force on this balloon. It is due to the upthrust force that the balloon is able to fly in air. Reason being that the weight of the fabric making the balloon, fabric is the material of the balloon. Weight of the fabric of the balloon together with the gas, hydrogen or helium preferably, inside the balloon, the total weight which acts downwards is very little or is lesser compared to the upward force, the upthrust, which is due to air. Upthrust, which is due to air. Therefore, because air is denser, an equal volume to this balloon of air is going to weigh more compared to the weight inside that balloon. That is why we say upthrust, because it is going up and it is greater than the weight of the balloon together with its fabric then the resultant force goes up. And that is why, at the end of the day, we will get the balloon going upwards, as long as it has been filled with a gas of low density compared to air. Therefore, we can see the application of Archimedes principle in this calculation which we are about to handle. Uh, so we got a calculation here, or a question here, which is talking of a weather balloon of volume 1.2 meters cubed, which is tied to a rigid stout while being filled with helium gas. Then we are told the mass of the fabric, the fabric making the balloon is 0.3 kilograms. Therefore, the material making the balloon is 0.3 kilograms. Then we are told to determine the maximum tension on the string. On the string. Density of air is given as 1.25 kilograms per meter cubed. Then helium density is given as 0.18 kilograms per meter cubed. So with this, uh, as I have said in the application, a balloon is filled with a gas of low density compared to air. And in this case, we have helium filling a balloon. This means that the weight of helium in the balloon and the fabric making the balloon, because they result to a resultant force acting downwards, that weight which is acting down must be less compared to the upthrust due to the air. And that is why this balloon is able to fly up. Therefore, we take the downward force, which is the weight of balloon and the air which is inside it. So downward force. The downward force. Downward force will be weight of weight of balloon. So weight of balloon pertains the fabric making the balloon and the helium filling the balloon. So we can check helium. The weight of helium will be given by its mass times g mass times g and the mass of helium will be given by the volume which it fills 1.2 times the density of helium given as 0.18 then we multiply that mass with g which is 10 that mass with g which is 10 so multiplying will give us 1.2 times 0.18 multiplied by 10. This gives us 2.16. 2.16.
neutrons. Therefore, the helium are neutrons. Then there is a fabric making the balloon. Fabric making the balloon. And because we are given the mass already 0.3, we just multiply it with 10 so that we get 3 neutrons. Therefore, total weight of the balloon, which is acting downwards, the fabric 3 and the hydrogen inside 2.16, giving us 5.16 newtons. Therefore, we have a downward force due to the helium in the balloon and the fabric making the balloon, which totals to 5.16. This means now we can get the upward force, which is due to the upward force, which is due to the air displaced. Therefore, volume of air displaced. Volume of air displaced. Air displaced. Because the balloon is having 1.2 cubic meters, then it displaces an equal volume of air as it is floating. 1.2 volume of a balloon is floating in air, then air displaces 1.2 meters cubed, which means we can get the mass of air by multiplying the volume and the density of air 1.25 then times 10 so that we get weight so this is mass. volume times density gives us mass then multiplied by g gives us weight so 1.2 by 1.25 by 10 this gives us 15 newtons therefore we are acting upwards Therefore, now in this balloon, we have up thrust, which is 15 going up, and the weight of the balloon and the coordinate of the balloon, which is helium, weighing 5.16 newtons. Which means now the resultant force, which is the tension that is going to act on the string, will go upwards. Therefore, the tension on the string now will be the resultant force. The resultant upward force, 15 minus 5.16, subtracting this gives us 9.84 newtons. Therefore, we have 9.84 newtons which are acting upwards. And that is the force which is going to cause an upward motion of the balloon. Thank you very much for following. Subscribe to Shifting Grids and share the link. Thank you.